So, hey everybody, welcome to Beyond Influence. Today we are very, very fortunate to be uh, graced by Lindsey Von Bramer, who is also uh, a influencer through her pet. So I guess that's a pet influencer yeah. manager. <laughs> uh, uh, Lindsay's dog is Pardon Thy French, um, who has gained quite a substantial following through social media. And so uh, when Lindsay reached out, I was very excited to learn a little bit more about what goes into everything. Hey, Lindsay, how are you today? Hi, we're doing good. Doing good. Excited to be here. Thank you. For sure. Um, and hey, Scott, as well, not to leave you aside, it's like <laughs> my co-host. Let's forget about that guy. How you doing, Scott? I'm good. It's uh, no, it's a good week. Uh, yeah, cranking through stuff. Really excited to talk about uh, Pardon Thy French. I, uh, I scrolled through the channel and I think I got lost for like a half an hour watching dog <laughs> videos. So it's it's always uh, a, a joy to, to get to, to scroll a, a channel that you like. So, Well, Lindsay, I think the, the best way to get started is always to just kind of open up and figure out uh, what helped you get your start. I think you've I've kind of previewed a little bit about how this whole, you know, operation started and everything. But how did you get started in thinking that your dog was going to be a famous dog? Yeah, well, I didn't really start off as thinking that my dog would be a, a famous dog. So we've been doing this for eight years. So it was kind of, um, you know, at the start of this kind of stuff um, for, for animals, at least. Uh, and and uh, I had, uh, let's see, how do I say this nicely? All of my friends started having kids. And um, so like this was before the mute button and on uh, social media, on Instagram specifically. And so like it, they'd be like posting their kids all the time, you know, like everything. And mm -hmm. um, yeah, that's fine. But you can't like unfollow your friend. But it'd be like, you know, <laughs> uh, and so when I got Beth, I noticed myself doing the same thing. And I was like, you know what, I'll just make her her own page. And it's more of an opt in situation for my friends. Like, I'm not going to know if someone doesn't follow me. I don't care. Like, I would get it. Like, you know, I wouldn't follow people's dogs back then either. I actually didn't follow any dogs back then. Um, so, so yeah, so I just did it for myself. When we started off, I cursed a lot, you know, because like here was this like really cute, white three-legged French bulldog. And then I'd have her say something kind of crude in the comments. So it like <laughs> made people kind of go, wait, what, <laughs> you know, <laughs> or like really dirty music. Um, so the juxtaposition, I think like caught people's eye, but it wasn't until we got reposted. I was working at snow. I was doing a uh, freelance. Um, I do digital marketing. I've been doing it for 20 years. And so at that point in time, I was making lookbooks for a brand called snow peak. And here in I live in Portland, Oregon. And so um, I had snuck out of my lunch break and went and adopted Beth and then snuck her back in to the store. Um, and so we had a lot of fun with her there and it was really great. And they were awesome about me having her at work, but we were, you know, working in these close quarters. And then one day, um, one of my girlfriends was like, Hey, when did you get 500 followers? And I was like, what are you talking about? I had like, you know, 20 maybe. And I was like, what are you talking about? And then it was like, every time we refreshed, there was like hundred, 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 hundred. And what had happened was I started asking people, Hey, how, you know, how'd you find us? And there was a windstorm in Portland. Um, and I had taken Beth out and had put a lion mane on her and put a slow motion, you know, video to it. And this account, um, out of Mexico or South Africa, I can't quite remember called, um, <laughs> Black Tiger, White Jaguar. That's totally not the name. I will send it to you so we can, you know, give them <laughs> that's awful. But, um, but they had reposted, they had like millions of followers. And so, um, that people, you know, found us from there. And then I kind of was like, ah, mm, I get it. So I want to be posted on someone else's page, you know? So then I started, you know, tagging like bigger accounts, like dogs of Instagram, um, rescue pets of Instagram. And then they started to see my stuff and then reposting and reposting it. And it just kind of took off you know, took off from there. That's awesome. And, uh, maybe tell us, uh, I think you have two dogs now, maybe talk us through, um, you know, your pets and kind of, you, I'm curious about the adoption story. You said you have a three-legged, uh, French bulldog and, and so, uh, yeah, maybe what are the backstories on the two dogs and uh, how long have you had them? Yeah. So, um, like I said, I was working in digital marketing, so I, um, was, you know, doing a lot of branding out like 
Facebook pages and stuff like that. And I had uh, my cousin, my cousin worked at one of the rescues and was like, Hey, we need a logo. And I was like, all right. So I just like made him a logo and I started following them on all their socials. And then all of a sudden one day Beth came through my feed and I was just like imprinted on this dog. She was so cute. She had four legs and the other one was kind of like janky. And, um, they were, fundraising for her to uh, have her leg removed because she was found on the side of the road and she had a big mast cell tumor in her back left paw. So someone had just kind of dumped her. Um, and I was like, well, oh my God, she's got three legs. Now I want her even more. Right. And so I just like really like went hard into like trying to get this dog. I was like, I'll do whatever you guys want. You guys want me to make you a website? I'll make you a website. Like, how do I get to the front of this line? And so I did. I ended up making, <laughs> making them a website and like helping them out with some marketing stuff. And um, they gave me Beth and that was awesome. And so it was kind of like it took off from there. I took her everywhere with me when I first got her. You know, I was single. I lived on my own. Um, I worked freelance, so I was already working from home or once in a while in an office, um, but I could always bring her and I would take her everywhere with me and I would just film everything. I saw everything like a scene, like we got up in the morning, that's our scene. You know, we went to lunch, that's our scene. We went to dinner, that's our scene. You know, we like chilling, having, you know, wine and watching TV at night, like that's our scene. Like we did a lot of videos like all day long Um, because I was alone, you know? It's like now it's different when like I have, you know, a boyfriend and um, now I don't, it's like not so much, but um, you know, I get, I get enough in there. I try to get up like, you know, two or three, at least minimum stories a day. It may not be like a, a full post, but at least like people will know what we're doing. Um, so yeah, so that's how I got Beth. And then I had another, we had another dog that I, we got during COVID from a rescue down in California at the NorCal Bully Breed Rescue named Doc. And he was a cleft palate and he's passed away, but he was a lot of fun. And then we just got little Billy Holiday. Um, so we named Doc Holiday Doc Holiday because Doc Holiday, the actual cowboy, was a dentist and he had a cleft palate. So we thought that was funny. And then Billy Holiday, obviously the singer, and then like paying respect to Doc. That's how we got that name. And she's great. She's from a rescue up here in Eugene, Oregon. And her kind of story was her dad is her brother. <laughs> so all these dogs are wonky, you know, like that's, that's what I love. That's what I get. You know, like I'm not going, I'm not going to go, you know, to the breeder for French bulldogs and, and get, you know, a dog from one of them. There's so many, you know, since French bulldogs became like the most popular dog, a lot of really bad breeding uh, operations going on because they're expensive dogs and, and people want that, but they're not going through all the efforts of, right. you know, making the dogs properly, I guess you could say, um, the lack of better terms. But, uh, so a lot of them come out, you know, unhealthy. And so instead of, you know, getting a dog from a breeder that is, could also be, you know, unhealthy cause you never know. Um, we like to get the ones uh, that need help because thankfully with my platform, we're able to do stuff like that, you know? So we, we publicize every part of like our health journey with the dogs, both Beth and Billy. Um, because it's really good information for people who have been in these situations and don't know what to do. Like, here's what we've done. Beth has had a lot of health problems. Um, our previous dog and doc had a ton and, you know, Billy, Billy, so far, so good, you know, <laughs> even though a little, little inbred and bred, but so far, so good. Um, that's, uh, you know, I, I admire that. I, I admire that you're making sure that all dogs are cared for in this sense uh where you're not just going out and just putting the highest dollar on one that you want to get but really looking for dogs out there that might have been ignored or left behind uh yeah. I, I really think that's that's a special trait within a human being to care about that you know i think it's funny that you did mention you know when you were trying to start your journey that you would curse a little bit and that may not have exactly been you know um beth's personality right. you know so i'd love to know how you know what, what are the personalities of your dogs right now and and how do you show that to the people when you're you know putting pictures or videos up yeah so beth is just like a cranky old lady you know picture her like smoking for 80 years like that's her vibe you know and she's just <laughs> always annoyed with me always like 
sassing off to me and uh that's kind of like what we put out there you know and people have been following us for so long that you know they do know her personality which is kind of a crazy thing to, to feel it's like you don't know what's going on but actually yeah a lot of people do get it you know and they'll be like she doesn't mm-hmm. like that she doesn't like what you're doing and i'll be like oh yeah thanks <laughs> But yeah, so she's just kind of a cranky old lady. So like, that's how things like her captions and kind of storyline, you know, goes out there. Billy's a wild animal. She's just getting bigger and bigger every day. And she's just like a doofy kid, you know, and that's, 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 that's her thing (laughs) currently. Just like annoying, an annoying, like little sister. That is super cool. I think trying to relate to the people who are within your audience or within the dog's audience by portraying who the dog is. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Oh, the personification of that is, is actually pretty hilarious to me. You know, I, I'm curious, you know, you, you talked about growing your follower count almost by, by accident and, and getting picked up and then, you know, realizing that there's something here, you know, what were your initial approaches to, to growing the account. And, you know, you mentioned getting tagged by bigger accounts. Was Mm -hmm. there like a trial and error process and kind of, was there a point where you're like this, I'm going to take more seriously. I'm going to lean into this. Um, There's potential to grow this, you know, far beyond just a follower count and really turn it into something bigger. I'm kind of curious what the, the big milestones were on that journey. And you know, some of the setbacks and approaches you took? Yeah. So, you know, other than like tagging accounts, we do a lot of collaborations with other dog uh, influencers, you know, like with collaborative posts or giveaways. Um, but I had hit like 30,000 followers pretty quickly. And at that point, there was an agency that reached out to us um, and took us on as, as their client and kind of that's where like the actual, like making money part of it, like started for me. And I was like, okay, you know? Um, and I think Nickelodeon was our first client, Hmm. you know, which is a pretty big first client, you know, when you're going from zero to Nickelodeon, I was like, okay. And so that's when it kind of hit me that, you know, this is, this is cool. Um, but then shortly after we got flown out to New York to, uh, speak at a conference, um, for these dogs. And I had made a, you know, I made a website immediately for my dog because I'm a nerd um, and connected it to a drop shipper, Printful. <clears throat> and this is like kind of when they were beta, they were just first starting, but I didn't have money to like make a thousand t-shirts, but people would be like, Hey, we want a Beth t-shirt, you know? And I'd be like, Oh, okay. So I did that. And I just started making all this like apparel. And my agency at the time was like, you know, don't waste your time on that. No one's going to buy it. That's not like a big, you know, a big thing. And I'm like, well, okay, but it's also free and easy and I have fun doing it. And so I had shown up in New York to go to this conference and there was probably like 50 people wearing our stuff, which is a lot, you know, like one person wearing our t-shirt would have been like really cool. But like there was at least like people were had leggings on headbands, like the whole, you know, the whole gamut. And like, that's when it really kind of sunk for me because that's when I first saw fans, you know, like in Portland, when I would be walking downtown, I'd get like a honk once in a while I'd be like, Beth! as we'd like go by and we'd be like, yeah, you know, like, or at the bar or something like that. Like that was really fun. But it was really when we went to New York and, um, you know, went to this conference that like it became real because when you're behind a screen, it's just kind of like, you don't know, you know? And, um, but when you see people like freaking and shaking out when they like come to meet you, it's super cute. And it's like, it's really endearing, you know, to see these people of all ages, you know? So that's where, that's, that's when it really kind of kicked in for, kicked in for me. Yeah. I think it's hilarious. Um, when you bring up the, right. like the things that happen in your hometown, I always, I always have this feeling of like how big I am, where I am uh-huh. and then how big I am everywhere else. Right. And I've had some pretty cool moments like where I was, I think I, we were in Greece once and somebody like ran up to us and wanted a picture and stuff. And that's cool and all, but in Greece we're like, I think semi-recognizable okay in seattle it's yeah. like unbelievable and so yeah. that's like that's something that i noticed with creators it feels like being in your hometown mm-hmm. is always it's a completely different feeling you know when you're recognized there it's like yeah. your hometown hero well i wouldn't say i'm a hometown hero by any means but i definitely <laughs> like um i mean people love that for for sure but mm-hmm. um i think you know going to new york, new york was big because that's one of the biggest frenchy places and mm-hmm. uh, new york and la and so i 
I, there was before COVID, we'd go down to LA quite a bit to do stuff. Um, you know, we do big events or like little, little gigs down there <clears throat> and people knew her more down in LA than they would, than they, than they do up here in Portland. That's you know? cool. So that was always fun. Like seeing someone on the plane being like, Oh my God, there's <laughs> Beth. You know, it's crazy. Or like real housewives coming to like sit in line to meet Beth. It was wild to me as well. One thing I've noticed, um, kind of digging into some of the, you know, pet kind of creator and, and pet accounts is the most successful ones also have an interaction with their owner or the family. And it's that kind of dynamic and that relatability of, of both the pet owner and the pet that makes it really endearing. And, and so I'm curious, like aside from Beth and, and Billy, you're also putting yourself out there to an extent, you know, as Lindsay, um, how do you, you know, was that a process of like being vulnerable and putting yourself out there, worrying about, you know, putting yourself out there to all these followers, or it was kind of more organic and just happened from the beginning. I'm curious kind of for you as part of that, um, what was your journey? Like, how did you feel about that as, as things started to develop? Yeah, I, um, it happened organically, uh, at first because I would put myself on a lot when I kind of first started because I'd hold her and talk to her or like we'd be out somewhere and I'd be like talking to people. I used to have this hashtag Beth loves boys. And we would like, you know, mess with guys. I'd be like, Oh, excuse me. Can you hold this for a moment? Like some cute guy or whatever. And like my friends thought that was funny and we'd film the whole thing. You know, it's like just me trying to like go up and talk to some guy. Um, you know, I'm the youngest of three girls and there isn't something that my sisters have not said to me. So I don't, there is, I, I don't take, um, it's fine if someone wants to make fun of me, quite honestly. Like I, it's, it's more something for us to make content out of, right? Like there's this one where I was talking a lot and, um, some, some girls said that like my voice gave them gas, you know? <laughs> so then it's like, it's funny. Cause then I can screenshot it, put it in our stories. People love it. I make a t-shirt out of it, blah, blah, blah. Um, it's good. You know, it's, it's, it's whatever. I don't, I don't really get a lot of, a lot of crap anymore. Um, but I'm not in it as much, you know, I'm in it when I do brand stuff. Cause we got to do like voiceovers or I have to be like talking depending on who the client is. Um, but a lot of the times now I just, some kind of like, you know, Beth is getting older. So the sh there's like a shift in like what we're doing. Um, so I don't take her out like into the public. We've moved to the country, you know, since COVID, like a lot of people. And, um, so we're not like out in the public a lot. So I don't, it's hard for me to think of ways to put me into it other than just talking to her, like while I'm holding the camera. Right. Um, other than like when we're in like an ad. So I'm kind of mostly there just like that I don't, I don't purposely go out of my way to put myself in as much, you know, anymore. I, I can, I feel like I feel more silly about it now than when I first started. Yeah. That's you know? interesting and how that, how that evolves over time. Yeah. Yeah. Like at first, like I didn't care. I didn't care. Like if like people thought I looked stupid who knew me, you yeah. know, cause I'd be like, well, that's funny. <laughs> look what I'm doing. Look what you're doing. You yeah. know? <laughs> yeah. That, that's actually funny. I think, um, that would be a superpower that just about um, any influencer or creator would love to absorb is the ability to take someone trolling you or making fun of you and turn yeah. that into something positive. Um, oh my goodness. If I could do that, I would, I'd, I'd be worth a lot more money. Let's just say that. <laughs> um, it's yeah, it can get pretty crazy out in the internet streets. And so I do think finding a good way to cope with it or heal or like learn from it is really, really positive. And if you can turn that to ammo, that's great. You know, I think, um, with everything that we're hearing about Beth and, and, mm -hmm kind of how things started, you know, you landed Nickelodeon to start off with, mm -hmm. right? How, how have the deals kind of, you know, matriculated since then? What would you say is, you know, one of the favorite companies or a few favorite companies or organizations that you've worked with since then? Yeah, let's see. Um, the Farmer's Dog is a really great company that we've been working with for a long time. And, you know, what's really cool about, I mean, it's a dog food, right? We do a lot of things other than like dog stuff, but like, what I've really loved about working with them is like when you take Beth on as a client, you're taking on um, a dog who's different. And so that really means a lot about your brand. Um, you know, she is uh, an amputee. So there's like a visual difference. Um, 
she's a French bulldog and which, you know, a lot of people have their own thoughts on the making of a French bulldog, you know, but they're the most popular breed and they are the most, or one of the most like allerg, like they have so many problems and allergies and stuff. And so a food brand knowing that, like that's a smart move on their, you know, part to say, Hey, this works for Beth. Um, and, you know, having partners like that, where it gets kind of like, you know, going back to putting yourself out there, <clears throat> it's when we do a brand deal where things can get like where I really want to be sassy because that's when people will say stuff because they don't know Beth, they don't know our story or whatever. So like the comments can get like a little, uh, they can get kind of crude, you know, like <laughs> I had one guy tell me that he wanted to kick her into an alligator pit. <laughs> You know? Oh my goodness. I know. Is yeah. that crazy? And so, yeah. but like when you're working with a brand, you can't like, I can't like get in there and say stuff. Right. Um, yeah. So that's kind of like where that would, if you want to get back to like putting yourself out there, that's probably the hardest part for me is cause I do want to mouth off. Um, but I don't, sometimes I have a friend do it for me, but, um, <laughs> Yeah. So, so, so that's fun, but working with uh, the farmer's dog has been really, they're a really great um, company to work for. I have a lot of fun working with Poopery. Say so, uh, they have a pet line and they, their marketing is so funny. Um, just like around the whole <laughs> going to the bathroom and smelling and stuff. And so they're, they're a fun uh, company to work with. Uh, we work with bounce um, a lot, the fabric softener they have a line that, um, keeps hair off your clothes. So you throw the fabric, um, sheet into the dryer and it helps like one take, uh, hair off and then also like make it so that you can just like wipe off your shirt, which is cool. Um, but again, like what makes it awesome for these kind of clients is that they're taking a chance with Beth, you know, it's just not like any other golden retriever, you know, where they all kind of look the same. If you're signing Beth, people know, her because there isn't another dog that looks like her. Uh, so, so yeah, so I always respect the people who want to continue to work with us, you know, as well, because it's funny, the, um, what I put on our feed versus like what I'll make in like a full edited, like brand video is very, is very different. You know, what I put on my feed is like basically Beth, like making a face movement and I'm like putting a caption to it because she's white and you can really see like her eyebrow movement and stuff. Um, but then, you know, when I go into, because I've just been in the field for so long and, uh, photo editing voiceovers, you know, captions and all that stuff. And like doing different, like, um, transitions or green screens is like stuff that I already know how to do. So when I'm working with a brand, it is fun to kind of like explore and like do be able to do that kind of stuff. Cause it doesn't work really well on my feet if I just do it in a casual video, you know, and I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna sit and dance with Beth. Um, <laughs> you know, there's like things that I'm like, I'm too old for that. That's awesome. Uh, I actually, uh, the farmer's dog is, is a great brand. Uh, randomly, one of my good friends from middle school is the SVP of brand Marshall ball at the farmer's dog. And oh, crazy. so when he started there, I, I went on this whole like journey of, of seeing about their product and kind of some more natural dog food. And, mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's small world, definitely, uh, also Portland, Portland based, oh, but, uh, it's, it's interesting you talk about uh, some of the kind of production around uh, making videos. And, you, you know, do, I, I see people go a lot of different styles where they go, okay, I'm just going to use my phone and kind of yeah. go a more low budget route or they go full on uh, Instagram filters and they're buying high end cameras. And, and I guess what was your approach? Did you, you know, ever go down the high production route or, you know, dive into that or, or do you feel like, you know, just with a phone and kind of a spontaneous moment, you're able to capture the same. I'm curious, like the whole process behind the content creation. Um, Depends on the budget. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <Right? laughs> so I can kind of go both. Like I can do, um, I can do it all off my phone or, you know, I'm blessed. My partner does like Super Bowl commercials. So we mm. have access to the best of the best things, you know, if need be, but obviously that's where your budget like gets higher and depends on the kind of content. But what I find is people, brands are wanting raw content, you know, more UGC uh, style. So mm. the nicer it is, the more it's like people kind of keep going, you know, they want it to be like a little shaky and like, um, 
the, uh, you know, the captions to be like some weird font, you know, to where like, I wouldn't do them very clean, like lines in my design. But, um, when I do it on there, I have to like, kind of almost like make it like, I'm just teaching myself how to do this, you know? So it's kind of fun, you know, depending like the, I always ask, like, I'm like, okay, do you guys have any, um, keywords you want me to put in there? And they're like, you, what? And I'm, you know, like there's like these things that like, they're like, Oh, uh, yeah, sure. We do. Like I can tell the brand person is like, um, yeah, we have keywords that are over here, <laughs> you know? Um, so it can go, you know, high level or mid level or, or low. It just kind of depends on what they're wanting to get out of the campaign, you know? So it's like, yeah. what are your goals for the campaign? How do you know, where do you want it to lie? Do you want it on your website? You know, could this possibly be going on TV? Like, so that, you know, there's always those, you know, kind of, uh, variables that we can accommodate for depending on what they what they want as you get these you know offers in and, and these possible partnerships do you have a process that you use to kind of choose which ones you want to work with and have you ever turned down you know a, a deal that was sizable but maybe didn't exactly fit sure. what you and beth you know are used to or like um yeah for sure you know like if it's if it's a brand that, you know, the product maybe has a ton, a ton of chemicals in it, I'm not, I'm not doing it. Um, if it's not something that I wouldn't actually use for Beth, like in the earlier days, I would have been like, that's cool. Sure. Whatever. I'd hawk anything anybody gave me. But now I just like people really take into account what we say in the products that we uh, suggest, you know, so I don't want to suggest something that, you know, might give a dog a reaction or like makes their, gives them an upset stomach. I look and see, um, who they've worked with before. I've looked and see, I look and see who, what company might own them. Uh, you know, like depending on how deep I want to go and like where we are in the state of the world. Um, but yeah, I definitely don't take just like anybody. It's, it, it's something that I want to believe in and I, I want people to know about, um, that, are more than ones that I want to go for at these, you know, at the stage of where we are at. As you start to get more selective um, and, and as you pick these brands, I think one thing that I always try to ask our guests is, do you have a yes. goal or dream brand to work with that you've not worked with yet? I always thought it would be cool. I would love to get like an airline deal, right? Like nice. specifically mm -hmm. Delta, obviously. But um, <laughs> I think that... The airlines are opening up to animals more, you know, it kind of at COVID, it like really stopped. People were put bringing like, you know, like peacocks on the plane and stuff and saying they're, they're emotional support animal. <laughs> crazy. But, um, and then there were, you know, there was a phase where like, there were a couple of situations where like a dog's died on board because the stewardess, you know, for instance, one like had to go in the overhead compartment and the, the lady put her dog in the overhead compartment and the dog died. Right. Um, so I feel like the airline industry has been doing a little bit of uh, damage control on that aspect. And now they're really coming around to being more accommodating for uh, animals and people traveling with animals because people are getting more animals and they love them and they don't want to, you know, travel a lot of times without their animals. I mean, same, you know, I could say the same with hotels. You'll see a lot of hotels that are now more pet friendly because people don't want to leave their animals at home. And so obviously, you know, you got to shift and, and accommodate for that. You know, you're like, we'll go to a hotel and they'll be like, Oh, do you have a dog? Do you have a bed? We'll have like a bed. They'll have treats. They'll have bowls. They'll have like the whole, the whole like nine yards for them, which, you know, 10 years ago, they didn't do that. Five years ago, they didn't do that. Yeah. That shift has been huge. Mm -hmm. Um, nowadays, you know, I walked into a dog dadding situation once I got married. And so <laughs> I'm cognizant of that. Uh, just about any time that I, I go online and book us well, a hotel, because if we're thinking about traveling, um, the pet expense becomes a thing, right? Yeah. Are we going to leave the dog at home, which is what, maybe like 60 to $80 per mm -hmm. day? Mm -hmm. Or are we going to, I don't know, pay for a pet friendly room, which is like five to 10 extra bucks. Right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so that has been huge. And, and when you go there, there's treats and there's a dog bowl and like, there could be even like a little dog park in the back for the dogs. And so oh, yeah. that has been a massive shift. I think people are noticing companies are becoming more aware. Everybody knows in, in order to bring people along, you got to make sure you accommodate the things that mean the most to them. So I'm curious for, you know, I, I think you almost stumbled into this situation by 
you yeah. know, creating this channel for your dog and then starting to Loving. to see, you know, this almost serendipitous increase in follower count and getting cross posted. You know, if you, if you were to give advice now, knowing all, you know, over the, I think you said seven or eight years of, of posting and someone was trying to go out today and, you know, aspire to be a creator and as, aspire to go out and, and do something similar in their own way. What, what encouragement would you give them? Where would you tell them to start? Um, you know, knowing everything that you know now. Yeah, I think, um, well, I, I guess I guess a couple of things. Look, you know, obvious cliche thing is to be yourself, right? Like, because there's no one like you, and like that's what makes you original, and that's what make that would make your whole brand original, right? Is is to be yourself and not to go try and be someone else who is like has a whole like sepia grid or something like that. You know, um, I, I see a lot of agencies when they're trying to tell people like, oh, how do you, you know, this is how you become an influencer. You make your page look like this, and it's like my page is chaos. You know, I, you know, my cover photo is something where Beth is like, eh, you know, like <laughs> I, I just want it to be chaos. And I think, you know, it, it works for us, but the more people start trying to brand themselves like someone else, everything becomes the same and you're not setting yourself apart for, uh, to get a brand deal. Right. Um, so I say, you know, be yourself. Another thing that I would do is if I was just getting started is, um, a lot of UGC content, you know, like go to brands and make, you don't need to have followers to be a content creator. You know, you can go cause brands need content, right? They need mm -hmm. it. And so you can go and get paid and just make videos, um, and not even like have thousand followers. And I think that's always a really good way to start because then you're teaching yourself negotiation. You're teaching yourself all about reading the contracts. Um, you're teaching yourself, um, you know, exclusivities, like all the, all the like little nuances before you go and like get a big brand deal. Right. And then you don't have to hire an attorney if you understand all of the, you know, legalities of it, because that's the biggest part. Right. Um, cause that's where you can tack on more fees, if you will, yeah. you know, if you know that stuff. Um, mm -hmm. and I think that would be one of the big things is like maybe understand like the keywords of, of a contract. I love the the kind of UGC angle or just creating content. Um, I was talking with someone the other day and and they're working at kind of a news publisher and they're they're doing reviews of products and they're working with various influencers and you know something fell through. So one of the interns is just like, I'll make it, I'll go. And she just grabbed her phone and made a TikTok of her using this like convertible jacket that turns into like a vest or like a crop jacket, a long jacket. <laughs> And it was like their highest performing post. And it was just her in her apartment living life and like walking out in this jacket. And they're like, wow, this is like a whole nother approach. And she now has this following just by kind of putting herself out there doing free content, it, it, you know, essentially free content. She wasn't paid to do that particular piece. She was just doing her job and, uh, you know, and I think the, you know, your point, the realness of it, like she's a real 20 something living a real apartment life on a budget, trying to buy one thing that becomes four things and look cute and stay warm. And, and I think there's something relatable about that. Whereas you get this influencer who's got highly stylized content, going to do a whole photo shoot. It's not as relatable and, and you know, it's not, it's not as real. And, and yeah, I think, I think there's something to that of just, you know, be yourself and it, I think especially from a product perspective, people want to envision themselves. I laugh because I, maybe I'm the only person, but like I go to Amazon and I actually look at the photos people put and I'm like, what is their experience using this product and what does it look like? And like, uh, and I just think there's something relatable and, and it can be the worst picture I've ever seen in my life. And it could be a person who looks completely different than me. But again, I find value in just kind of seeing what it looks like in a non-product photograph in the real world with a real person using it. And there's, there's something that brings trust. It, it brings uh, confidence that you're going to get something that, that you want to use. Yeah. And it's like, it's authentic, right? Yeah. So just like, you know, to piggyback on what you're saying about looking at those product photos by um, customers, it's like, okay, well that customer has a different body, but I can see how the fabric forms around them and by, by looking at their photo, like you can like know that it's stretch or not know that it's stretch. Maybe it's not going to curve. It's just going to lay straight, which is like for your body, maybe not work, you know? Yeah. So I'm with you. I'm with you on that. I think the UGC and the, and like <laughs> the product reviews are, are, uh, are big ones. People get paid to do product reviews, um, on Amazon and all these different platforms, all, uh, 
I haven't done any of that stuff. Um, but I see it come through my feed as like something that people really get into, you know, which right on. Yeah. I feel like that has become like the current generation of like, uh, reviewing, you know, I think if it's live, like there's like the the obviously different steps. It all started with just writing something out. Yeah. Then it became uh, having a picture of it. Mm -hmm. Then it became, uh, having a short video of it, you know, and now it's just like going through and elaborately describing every piece of it. Anytime that I ever think about buying a car, mm-hmm. I go straight to YouTube, <laughs> right? Because I, I look at the reviews and I never like, I like looking at like the professional um, reviews. They're great. But the ones that I trust most are the ones where it's literally just some guy. He's like, Hey, I got this car and I'm going to tell you my six months of ownership. Yeah. <laughs> you know what yeah. I mean? yeah. yeah. Cause he's really telling you his experience and you're going to, you know, you're going to know exactly how you're experiencing that as well. Um, but you know, I think we've had a great conversation today and I think as we kind of think about closing it up, I think there's a couple of things that I always love to touch on. Mm-hmm. Right. The first thing is I'd love to ask you, What's next for you and Beth? What are y'all currently working on? You know, what are your, you know, next couple months look like? Yeah, let's see here. Um, I've been writing a book for a while now. Um, it's called The Shit My Dog Has Seen. And <laughs> <laughs> um, I have some really cool partners on this book. But what happens is, you know, because we have been out there for so long, people will share their stories with us. Um, like the good, bad, and the ugly, basically the embarrassing, like that's what I want. Um, and so there are a bunch of like, kind of like the short stories, uh, with illustrations, um, that I feel like I'd like, you know, just make a series out of that just kind of like a bathroom book or whatever, where people are just like reading. It's almost like the old YM magazines, mm-hmm. <clears throat> the, the Y like people, like when I was in, we would just flip to the Y me section and just like read the embarrassing things. Mm-hmm. So it's a book that talks about that. I've partnered with, um, Matt Holloway from bad manners, which is a cookbook, uh, a vegan fo- cookbook where they curse all in it. Um, and then I got a buddy, um, Danger Aaron from Jackass, who has like signed on to be the voice for like the audiobook. <laughs> and he him reading these stories is like hilarious. So um, so yeah, so we are looking to do launch a Kickstarter for that um coming up hopefully by the time this is out, you know, so that'll be on our website. Um, but that'll be a really fun book. I think that it's just fun to get these field these stories from our followers all around the, all around the world right so there's all different you know sets of things going on that are just like oh man it's not just like stepping in poop you know it's like <laughs> feeding your in-laws the dog food on accident because it was in the freezer and it looks like you know taco meat so then it goes in the tacos and you're just like oh my god everyone's sick now or, or not sick or they love it and they're like hey let's make those tacos again and you're like oh yeah let's make those you know, so that's a fun project that we've been working on that I'm that I'm excited about. Um, uh, yeah, yeah, I think that's that's uh, right now kind of one of the biggest ones. And then, of course, you know, extending our brand partnerships is always fun, like bringing on new people um, and new products is, is fun. But uh, but yeah, the book is kind of my focus right now. Awesome. And then for everyone who is listening out there. How do we find you, you know, or what you're working on, what's releasing, where do we find you online, all that good stuff? Yeah. So you can find us at Pardon Thy French. Uh, I I got that handle because it's excuse. Well, I don't know if it really is, but it was more like excuse you versus excuse me. So it's not part of my French. It's like, no, excuse Mm -hmm. you because people say weird stuff to Beth on the street. And I'm like, Mm -hmm. wait, what? You know, so that's how <laughs> mm-hmm. we did that. And she's named after Beth is named after uh, the surfer, Bethany Hamilton, um, who got who had her arm bit off by the shark um, because I thought it was like an it gave an inspirational, like resilient vibe to like to her story. Um, so. So, yeah. So you guys can follow us uh, at Pardon My French uh, or find us. Uh, we have a website, pardonthyfrench.com. Really, all you have to do is put in white three legged Frenchie and Beth is coming up. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that's amazing. Well, I, I just love the, the story so much. Um, it's been great to talk with you. I, I think, um, you know, both Beth and you, uh, so, in your own right are, uh, you know, doing amazing things and inspiring a lot of folks. And, um, you know, it's, I think it's, there's a really positive side and a, and a positive inspirational story to, you know, care for animals who can't, you know, can't advocate for themselves 
And, you know, I think all of us as humans, we, we have uh, an obligation and, and a duty to, to help the animals of the world as well as help each other and, and be good stewards of, of the planet and all that. Not to be cheesy, but, you know, we should. So, uh, wow. <laughs> and also have some fun and swear a little bit in the process of, of all of that. So, <laughs> yeah. Uh, it was great meeting with you. Thanks for being on the pod. And that wraps up this episode. Uh, join us next week for the, the next one. See y'all. Right on. Thanks. Bye, Dave. everyone.